Yeah, so in today's session, what we do is we'll try to concentrate on the FND module because, you know, like uh, in the coming sessions, this particular component will be used at most. And even like for a technical developer, you should have perfect knowledge on the AOL area. Okay, so that's the reason what we do is we'll totally dedicate today's session on the AOL part. So AOL means application object library. Right. Mm -hmm. And you know, like maybe initially it used to be called as you know foundation. That is the reason. Like, what are the tables which are part of FND? They'll start with FND. Okay. The application top, the application top for this application object library is not AOL top. It is FND top, right? Yeah. The application top for the application object library is FND top, and the application short name of a application short name for application object library is FND. So one basic thing is like uh, what comes in the FND, right? If you remember, FND is not any business specific module. Now, if we consider our financials or general ledger or maybe, you know, like a payables or receivables, these are the specific modules for a business. But here FND is not FND is not at all about the business. It is about the total Oracle ERB foundation itself. Nothing but, you know, like uh, let us say if you want to create a new concurrent program, you require you require a particular form where you can register it, right? So those particular yeah. base components are part of this AOL module. So like to say further, like uh, I'll again repeat this set of components which are part of AOL. Messages, value sets, lookups, flex fields, DFF and KFF, we, we should be very much strong in these particular things, okay? And mm -hmm. the concurrent programs, and concurrent create, uh, concurrent executables, and the initial session which we discussed, like, you know, user, menu, uh, one minute. Form. Yeah, so user, responsibility, menu, right? Form, function, mm -hmm. yes. And then mm -hmm. request group. Okay, of course there are a few more, but these are the general com generally things which you generally come across in the normal real time requirements. What we do is initially we'll just try to just see how do we create it. We'll not understand how do we, we'll not discuss about where to use it, but we'll try to concentrate on how do you create it. Okay, but later on we'll try to understand or we'll try to use in some of the requirements. Okay, initially we just try to mm -hmm. understand how do we create it, in which table they are getting stored. That we'll try to understand. Okay, so the first thing is messages, right? So I'll show you, then you know, you can, you can easily understand how exactly a particular message will be used. Let me open this one. Okay, I'm just opening the, our opening our instance in one of the browser. Okay, it seems a little slow. Okay. Yeah. Now what I will do is let us say I'll just give the username, but I'll just give a wrong password. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just click on login. Now can you see what it is giving? Login field. Please verify your information. Some blah blah stuff, right? So what kind of message it is throwing? It is throwing an error, right? It's throwing an error. Mm -hmm. Now, let us say, like as of now, you know, like uh, for our in training, so we just have only one English, one language got installed. That's the reason it is getting displayed in English. If your client is, if your client has installed in, you know, like uh, what you say, maybe uh, Chinese or Japanese, then you, it would have displayed in appropriate language based on the user locale. Use, we call it as user locale, right? Now, what I, want to, what I want to try to tell you is this particular message should have been, should be stored somewhere, right? Then only your application is showing this information. But where exactly yes. this is available, I will just want to show you that. So let me log in here. So there is a table called FND new messages. FND new messages. This is a table name. And try to search for message text. So whenever if anything which you get displayed in the, in the browser or maybe the, for the form, any error, warning, these kind of things, mostly they should be available here. Mostly. Okay. Can you see? Yes. FND, and if you see the message name, it is FND application login field. This is a message name, and this is the message text, right? So if yes. you like yes. uh, here, 
as of now if you see the language code is us if the if our instance had multiple language you would have one more record for other language as of now it is having only one record because we have only installed only one language that's the reason got some idea or yes okay so the purpose of these messages is like uh, whenever you design any concurrent program or whenever you design any custom form or you know like if you want to throw some errors warning confirmation success messages what we do is we'll try to pre we'll prefer use we'll try to use the concept of messages okay so as of now we have mm -hmm. seen where exactly it is used but we have to understand how do you, how it gets created also right how what is the navigation how do you create it right so let me show you that mm -hmm. So most of our AOL functionalities will be available from the application developer responsibility only. Okay. So here in the application developer, click on applications and can you see messages? Yes. Let's click on this. Now what I'll do, I'll just create a new message, XXLT, MSG1. Okay. And here it is asking which application. So uh, we can just mention the appropriate application name. I just entered the message name. Now, what we can do, go to database and try to find out. Select star from F and D new messages. What should I search? Message name, right? It's message name. Mm -hmm. Got it? Yes. Okay. So this is where it will get stored. I'll just save the queries. So later on, we'll discuss where it is, where it will be used. As of now, like uh, I may not get into much on these areas, okay? But later on, we have to concentrate on this particular one. Right now, just well, yeah. In the me. concurrent program, we can add message as well. Like we can. Yeah, obvious. Like uh, whenever you create a new form, so in the concurrent program, what we can do is like let us say if a program is getting failed, you can you know like uh, mm -hmm. try to mention some log messages according to your message. What you can do is you can create a message in this table, and using an API, mm -hmm. we can retrieve the message. Okay, and that mm -hmm. particular message you can just store in your one of your logging table. Okay. So there are many scenarios we can consider, but right now just understand how do you create it and in which table it gets stored. Okay. Okay. I'll surely discuss on that one because we need to discuss on the migration and there are many other parts of this AOL. Okay. Mm -hmm. And now other one is lookup. So there is something called lookup. Can you see here in the application yeah, yeah. lookups? And here it shows lot number of lookups. But as of now, what you do is just go with this one application object library. Okay. Mm -hmm. So first basic thing is what do you mean by lookup? So lookup means the basic bug. Yeah. So the basic purpose of this lookup is, you know, like uh, to store the lookup code and meaning. Nothing but, you know, like uh, in some of the programming languages, if you observe, uh, maybe mm -hmm. I can show you an example for this one also. Generally, like, you know, whenever you have, you know, like a uh, drop downs or LOVs, what we do is we'll be creating the set of values in this lookup and those things will be used in the application accordingly. Or uh, I'll show you one example, then we can understand very easily. Okay. What we'll do is I'll go to the general ledger. I'll just save. Okay. Now here, if you see, like here, it, you know, if you see general time, it is showing standard and average, right? It is showing standard and average. And if you see this, like here also, like a method is change sign or switch or de switch debit or de debit or credit, right? Or what you can see this, if you see the general type, it is showing two list of values, two values, right? Standard or average. So for when you design as a developer, when you define this, when you design this Oracle form, you require these set of values, right? But you know, like a way to define that, right? So better the, the, the basic thing is like it, like in the programming world, it is never preferred to do any hard coding stuff, right? There should be some placeholder where you should allow you to enhance your application at any point of time. It should allow you to extend it. That's the reason what Oracle has done is like it provides extensibility for your Oracle ERP. Now here, where exactly this general type is getting stored, what we can do is you can just try to search that. 
so here if you see f and d lookup values so all the lookup values will get stored here where meaning in standard what is other one average right so here we got lot number of things because the same set of values are available in lot number of modules now but here what we can do is let us say as uh, this belongs to general ledger maybe what i can do is where or maybe order by we can do it j e not do you have module somewhere here it doesn't have any module id i guess it will not have any module stuff Yeah, it's not that much easy to find out what is it. Yeah, tell me. In description, uh, I can see like invoice and receivables data. In the table, there is a column called description. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in this one, what do you see? No, when, when you're uh, mm -hmm. using down, I, I saw some invoice. OK. Or I'll show you another type if not. Okay, we could not find this, right? So I'll try to show you another one also, not a problem. Yeah. See, like uh, one basic thing is like um, wherever you have these drop downs, mostly wherever you have these drop downs, you will have look up. You will have a look up for that. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very rare case, they will be hard coded, but most of the times, most of the times you'll have a look up for that. So now one, let me try again here, or maybe I'll try to go here, general ledger. Cup system. Okay, better I'll go here, not to confuse. See, in the application developer, application lookup, right? So go with the application object library. First of all, just try to see how do we create it. Okay, so later on I'll try to show you the real sample where exactly how are we using. But right now I'll just see this. I'll just see. ERP modules. Okay, this is our lookup name. Now, what we do is like generally when you are designing some applications where you require some set of values. Let us say you want to design your application, but initially only two modules, and later on you want to extend to extend it further. So the best thing, best approach is you know either you should have a database table where you can insert multiple records, or whether you should have some provision where the business user can enter the appropriate values, right? Something like that. So now in this one here, if you observe, what I can do is we need to enter lookup code and meaning. Okay, let us I'll just say SEM, and the meaning is supply chain management. HCM, human capital management. 
finance financials crj projects crm customer relationship management now here if you observe let us say as a developer you design an application and you consider only these values but later on your supervisor or business user comes into picture they want to show one more value so now like uh, because of this particular change it doesn't need to change any of your logic nothing but like uh, you just need to show the list of values right so business user can simply just add up one more value and this particular value will automatically show on your page it doesn't need to do any logic change isn't it yes that's the basic funda behind this okay so now where exactly this particular value is getting stored so this information will get stored in one of the table so if and look up values just see this look up codes look up sorry where look up underscore type is equal to just mention this okay now can you see we got the relevant stuff yeah. look up code and meaning and you know like there are some scenarios where you know like uh, these two values may not suffice nothing but you know like you want to add up some more description or you want to tag write some more extra thing you can also enable dff on this one okay but later on i'll tell you what is dff but right now this is how we create it and the table we have seen right f and a lookup codes f and a lookup values this mm -hmm. is a table where the lookups will get stored and the reason what is why why the reason is why the table name is getting started with f and a because this is a part of a while module that's the reason this is getting started with the f and a okay no clear so uh, so it is like um when when we are filling a value when see when when we navigate to a main form mm -hmm. uh, for a value if there is a drop down that means that a lookup is linked with that is it yes most of the times in most of the places we prefer to use this lookup concept okay, okay. only when there is a drop down drop down or lov or maybe you know sometimes within the code also use use it now if you observe like somewhere we have seen the status column right in the status column also we prefer to use okay. that yeah okay then then yesterday we have created values set no mm -hmm. that is also yeah see value set is also similar to that only but little bit different Okay. Okay. So you like we'll try to see why, where should we use it. Look up where should we use value set also. There are some scenarios okay. where you, where you know like a value set is not preferred, but there are some scenarios mm -hmm. where value set is preferred. But mostly functional wise, logically both are same. Logically, you know like uh, it, it's almost same. You just have a look up code and meaning there also. Okay. Okay. Let's we'll see that. So now are you clear with the lookup? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So concurrent program and concurrent executable we are already aware, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll tell you profile. Okay. First of all, I'll try to tell you profile. Lastly, we'll discuss about value sets. So profile means like uh, in Oracle ERP. So profile means like uh, to before I tell you this, I'll just let me explain you the concept first of all. Now assume that like uh, there are two users, okay, user A and user B, okay. And now, now what is the functionality they want to do is like uh, here, A belongs to supervisor department and B belongs to associate department, okay. Now what they want to do is like uh, as per your client requirement, there is a, there's a page, okay. There's a page, okay. So in this page, there are around like uh, three sections, okay. Section one, section two, and section three. So as per your requirement, this section three should be visible to only the only the employees who are part of who are part of this particular supervisor supervisor function supervisor role. Section mm -hmm. three should be visible to only supervisor role. And the other thing is like you know now. You know now, now we cannot like uh, generally like you know when the roles in any organization will get changed right today the a is supervisor tomorrow a may not be supervisor today a b is associate yeah. tomorrow b may be supervisor now so the basic thing is, here is you cannot hard code your employee names right you cannot hard code your employee name yeah. but 
how do we do it so of course there are a lot number of solutions but to just understand the usage of profile what i do is so i'll define a profile okay so let me define a profile what i'll do is to define a profile what you, what you have to do you have to go to application developer okay and can you see there's something called profile mm -hmm. go here and it will ask you all these details okay what is the name of your profile and what is application all these things let us say role profile okay this is my profile name and this is my mm -hmm. module so generally whenever you create any any new component it will always ask you the module name so in the real time what you do you need to mention your custom module name not application object library okay remember this whenever you create any new, new component always prefer your custom application name why because to differentiate that this is a custom component that's the only reason okay that's the only reason if someone says you know like uh, can you tell me like how many custom components are you are there in your particular erp because these particular erp versions will not be stand still right every day every month every year you'll generally get getting upgraded from version one version to another version or one erp to another erp yes that's the reason now this is my so as of now in the name and user profile name i'm just giving the same value okay i'll just save it now so this is only about creation of a profile this is about creation of a profile now what i want to do is i just want to enter a different values for this particular profile what did to enter for entering the values for profile nothing but for assigning different values to the profile we have to navigate to system administrator go to system administrator okay security profile can you see security mm -hmm. oh, sorry here can you see defile not here where is that yeah navigation is a little bit tricky here this is actually a shortcut but <laughs> i just want to see the navigation also the other way what you can do is if you don't remember even i don't remember now what i do is just go here expand the system administrator mm -hmm. try here security do you see profile no right responsibility this is user uh, yeah here can you see there is a sub menu called profile mm -hmm. system administrator the third one is a profile right third one yeah here itself so just so in the system administrator profile sub menu click on system can you see when you open yeah. when you click on that so it is asking so it is asking the profile name first of all and also it is asking mm -hmm. these all stuff so what exactly this means is all about it means that you just have one global variable called profile and you can mm -hmm. assign different values to this particular global variable for different roles nothing but let us say so the the top level role is called site level okay and the other mm -hmm. one is called you know like a uh, user level site user responsibility can you see site application means nothing but module responsibility and user organization means okay. like uh, ou but as of now just consider these things now here as a user when you log in as a user when you log in so so one like a set of responsibilities will be available to the user right so nothing but nothing but like a, let us say you're assigning some profile assume that you got assigned some profile value now what will happen is like uh, this particular you can have a different values for different different levels so now what i'll do is just observe this once then we can discuss again i have this profile value now what i want to do is for this particular user let us say operations user for user operations so this is the username which is already available for the operation user mm -hmm. i want to assign the value as no okay and now Mm -hmm. at the site level i want to assign y okay now what will happen is so when let us say as per the application which we are designing you know like we were without of designing some particular application page right now if operation user logs in if operation user logs mm -hmm. in what will be the profile value for this user the value will be n because we got some particular value which was assigned at this user level so the user level will override the value which is at the site level the value which is available at the user level will override the value which is at site level are you getting uh, 
what actually is this site okay see site means not, see site means is the highest level there are levels you know like uh, generally like when you it's a kind of hierarchy i can say it's a set of hierarchy so what happens is now you have some particular variable assume that you have a variable okay this is a variable which we have it and now what i want to do mm -hmm. is assume that we have three levels site mm -hmm. user and responsibility user means you, you know we know you we know what is user and responsible right mm -hmm. so as yes. of site site means is the total system level anyone within the system site means like a total users in a system we can consider that site means the okay. total application level the total <laughs> erp level site means the total erp level now we have this particular variable okay this is one of the variable or profile so at the mm -hmm. user level the value is n at the site level mm -hmm. the value is the value is y so when you are designing mm -hmm. let us say while well, like uh, assume that like uh, this particular user is running this particular page so in this page mm -hmm. in this page let us say you know like uh, assume that the profile value for this particular user is n so nothing but what will happen the supervisor role for this user is n so that is the reason this s3 will not get displayed let us say mm -hmm. assume that there is another user let us say i log into system now the profile value for me it will be y because there is no value which is assigned for my user so nothing but if there is no value then what i have to consider i have to get the value which is at site level for my user okay. level for my user level there is no value so i have to get it from my parent so at the parent level it is y so obviously it will become y for me okay. that's the logic so it's like you know the site responsibility and user this hierarchy will go mm -hmm. so the top is the top priority will be user like this okay okay so profile is nothing but a global variable or a global value which you can have a different values at different roles site responsibility okay. user application all these things okay, okay. so yeah so let me try where did we give the, see if, if i want to give the responsibility like mm -hmm. if the user logged in with application manager responsibility then only I, uh, yeah, that here, particular section yeah here you can do it now let us say so for this user for this user and for a responsibility called application developer mm -hmm. i want to assign a different value just see here as of now at the site level it is y and for this user mm -hmm. for this user i want to assign sorry n like this i can do it mm -hmm. like this we can do it okay okay yeah and next thing what we would like to discuss is yeah let us concentrate on this one so flexi field you know like uh, i can show you now okay let me show you anyway then we'll get discuss value set so flexi field you know in the flexi field there are two types okay we have descriptive flexi fields and key flex fields okay key flex fields so descriptive flex fields means let me show you the sample then we can easily understand okay let us say assume that uh, glj headers okay now just observe yeah can you see there are some columns which are starting with a uh, with the name attribute attribute 1 mm -hmm. right i took it 1 2 3 4 7 8 yeah and context so there are 10 attribute columns and then you have context columns right so now why do we have dff first of all so dff means it's called descriptive flexi field flex means like so these are flexible fields so if you want to extend the application let us say you know like uh, here let us go to general ledger again so then we really understand let us say you want to create a general okay now the requirement is such a way that like as of now oracle is providing all these fields but you know like generally 
this is a generic application right like uh, you know like your business requirement may not suit 100% to this particular this particular application there are chances you may need to modify something or there are chances you may need to disable something but now assume that in this particular general field what you want to do is you want to capture user name or maybe let us say you want to capture gst number very simple example you want to capture the gst number here so now like uh, nobody prefers to redesign this form right nobody prefers to redesign this form the easiest way is the easiest way what we can do is here can you see there is a rectangle box yeah right so what oracle will do is by default in every form you see you'll say you will have this rectangle box at the header level as well as the detail level most places here also you have it can you see rectangle box so what what oracle will do is it provides some extra fields and if you want to configure just configure those particular extra fields then you can capture the extra information it doesn't need to change any of the things it doesn't require any technical effort in this one that's the advantage of this particular flexi field concept this is called descriptive flexi fields now what i will do is i will enable gst number on this particular form okay observe that first of all i have to know what is my df of name so to know that what you do is click on help diagnostics examine okay observe carefully help diagnostics examine in the block mm -hmm. click on descriptive flexi fields and in the field what you do is you may get multiple things here you may get multiple descriptive fields because you have header section and line section generally header means the parent and the line means child right mm -hmm. click on okay now can you see this is my flexi field name header level this is my flexi field name so make a note of these things now this header yeah this one this is what we require so this is my flexi field name now what i will do is i want to enable gst number on this particular form what i will do is go to again application developer and now can you see flexi field the first one yeah. okay one minute yeah okay flexi field it is showing two things key and descriptive we have to navigate to descriptive in the descriptive again it is showing lot number of things what you do is just click on register first okay we doesn't need to register actually it is already available but we just want to search it first of all f11 general ledger and what is the field name this is the one right copy this mm -hmm. and this is a name okay it's not showing right go with the title got it yeah this is the title so you need to search this way application name and title and here it is showing something called table name right table name so that dff is linked to this table that that is what it means okay and now just click on columns here and can you see so all columns are enabled these are all columns which are part of dff only whichever columns which are enabled they are part of dff so attribute 1 to 10 they are enabled can you see attribute 1 maybe somewhere down i'm not sure where it is but yeah okay yeah here itself sorry here itself you have attribute 1 mm -hmm. so attribute 1 to 10 are part of the dff okay now close this one next thing what we do is in the descriptive menu only click on segments okay now search it again general ledger okay yeah so now here comes the important stuff okay now here what we do is so here we can configure it here we can con configure it so just click on global data elements and one more thing is if you want to do any modifications we have to unfreeze this one click on this particular checkbox you need to unfreeze so that you can change you can perform the modifications now i'll click on global data elements context click on segments now mm -hmm. can you see yeah it seems that this particular number is already available gst number is already available so but this is not displayed because this is not like a checkbox is not there here okay so gst number is already available right so i'll just ignore that then what i'll do is let us say i will add up something called mobile number mm -hmm. and here i'll select attribute 7 now can you see here it is asking the value set it is asking yeah. value set right so if we define value set we can 
assign the list of values list of values to this particular attribute okay what mm -hmm. we do as of now just ignore about value set let us enable the dff okay later on we'll discuss that so click on okay displayed enabled and here what you do is just click on open also click on open there is something called required right so just uncheck this one because if you make it as required until you enter this value it will not allow you to save it okay now save it okay and freeze it again okay now save it again so it will regenerate you know there are few things which it has to do in the background that will get done now close this one go back to general ledger now again and see the difference just click on this dff now do you see mobile number yeah right now it is not showing any list of values right it is not showing list of values but let us say you want to you want user to select any of the two mobile numbers now what i'll do is let us go to value set I'll, let's say application developer i'll create value set now okay because i cannot go with the lookup because as per the definition it will accept only value sets so that's how oracle mm -hmm. defined so i have to create only value set so go to application validation and set xxlt mobile numbers i'll just set 10 digit independent value set right numbers save it okay now what we have to do go to validation set validation and values now mention the name enter the values right let us say 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 0 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 0 1 okay two numbers now what we have to do now we have created a value set right now go to flexi field descriptive segments and search for your this one general ledger yeah and freeze again click on segments now on the mobile number click on open sorry it doesn't need to click on open here just in the value set field you can just mention the value set he from here also you can create a value set it's not that we have to create before you before you create this one either way you can do it's based on your comfort sorry xxlt and yeah okay these are value set fine now again freeze it save it now go to general ledger and you can see the difference right got it mm -hmm. so now let us say i'll save it yeah this is called context okay but as of now i'll just ignore this yeah just save it okay okay it is asking to enter one line right okay and it's been sent to then it's right yeah what if um, the the flexi fill we have created now is a mandatory like mm -hmm. it is not mandatory no what i'm asking is see if we want to add one more at, uh, column in this particular form mm -hmm. which is required like it is a mandatory value mm -hmm. uh, then if 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 a for a user he cannot see that no like i don't know i i, I don't think i'm asking you properly mm -hmm. see uh, first basic thing is what is the purpose of dff to capture extra information according to your business right mm -hmm. now there mm -hmm. are chances you may have a dependency now let us say your application your like uh, assume that like your erp application is used used in different countries and you know like mm -hmm. uh, as for the china requirement you have to capture three fields as per india india mm -hmm. requirement you have to capture five fields as per us require mm -hmm. only one field then how do you do it right mm -hmm. that is a basic question like uh, how like how can you do all those things what we can do is there is something called context there is something called mm -hmm. context what we do is for us mm -hmm. we'll create one context for china we'll create one context and for india we'll create one context so and based on a context and then we'll kill the we'll be creating a fields we'll be creating a different fields mm -hmm. so based on this you can enable disable required and all those things you can mention mm -hmm. 
-hmm. Now here, if you observe in this one, by default, it is showing only these two things, right? It's nothing but global stuff. But if you let us say, if you select some context from here, now let us say someone is, you have an option called Workday ERP. If someone mm -hmm. select this one, you may have only Workday account number. But let us say if I select mm -hmm. some other one, let us say if I select Siebel ERP, it may show some other information. Can you see CSA number it is asking? Let us if I select, mm -hmm. if I select employee additional details, it may ask some other thing. Okay. This is how you know, like you can still have a dependency also. There are some particular things. Let us say you want to capture only if A is yes, capture extra information. If it is no, just leave it like that. There are different uh, things you mm -hmm. can do. Okay. Yes. Now save it. Yeah. Now the next thing is like where exactly it is getting stored, right? Where exactly it is getting stored. So we'll try to validate from the back end. So let me get the je header id je okay we have mentioned our dff attribute 7 for our mobile number right so in our mobile number should be stored in the attribute 7 observe that Can you see attribute 7 mobile yeah. number right so this is the purpose and this is how you enable it okay okay now coming to other important one it is called key flexi field key flexi field is quite a different concept okay mm -hmm. so now the i'll try to tell you the purpose again so what we do is like how do you know whether a particular component is using key flexi field or not Descriptive flexi field, how do you know it? Whenever the column name is attribute, it means that it's a descriptive, that's it. If the column name is starting mm -hmm. with attribute, and if it is a seed, if it mm -hmm. is a seeded table, it is 99% DFF only. Very, very rare cases, it may not be DFF, but generally, if the, attribute, if the column name is attribute, and if it is a seeded table, then it's a mm -hmm. part of a DFF. Now, coming to mm -hmm. the KFF, whenever the column name is, whenever the column name is segment, it's KFF. Mm -hmm. That's okay. one of the that's a major difference between DFF and KFF. So DFF is for the purpose of capturing additional information, but key flexi field is not for capturing additional information. It is about generating the unique numbers. Okay. Totally different concept. It is north and west kind of thing. It's totally different. Okay, I'll tell you one simple example. Now, generally, maybe if you buy any product in the in, in the shop market, what you do, you'll have something called batch number, right? And you'll also have yeah. something called product code. Mm -hmm. Or maybe if you have observed the POS terminal, like uh, see, generally whenever in the in the supermarket, the POS terminal, they'll try to what you what you do, like if, whenever they want to enter the price, what they do, they enter your serial number of the product, or nothing but the barcode yes. number. I mean to say, the barcode yeah, number. Yeah. They used to enter it, right? So that's nothing but item number for them. It's nothing but item number. So the power code which is mm -hmm. present on a particular item will not be present on another one. I mean, this of course mm -hmm. there will be different story again, but generally. Or other thing is like if you gen generally if you consider any of the bikes or uh, motor vehicles, you'll have something called chassis number or engine number that will be unique across your motor vehicle across the country, right? Mm -hmm. Or maybe a registration number. Simple example is passport number. It's a unique, right? Within a country, it's unique. Yeah. Or maybe PAN card number in India. It's a unique. Mm -hmm. So these numbering should be generated now. If you observe PAN card number, let us say the first two codes will be, you know, particular state code, what you say, state code followed by, you know, like uh, the district code followed by Taluka code, something like that, right? And followed by some particular mm -hmm. se sequence number followed by again one alphanumeric. It will have different kind of uh, this thing, convention. So now what we do is like generally when Oracle like you know like uh, in the inventory model specifically in the inventory if you observe let me navigate there then I can, you can easily understand what I'll do is I'll navigate to inventory responsibility sorry not here inventory so you got some idea about what is inventory or still not clear Uh, this MTL uh, system items be there. Yeah, that is enough yes. as of now. Don't worry about the transactions. Just need to understand what is inventory, this master items, that's it. Mm -hmm. 
So the master item is nothing but see ERP application. Why does your business use? Because generally every business will have their own existence, right? Nothing but if it's a manufacturing company, their purpose is to maintain all your inventory data. Nothing but each item will have a product code, item number. Based on that, they perform the business, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. now let us say, uh, just consider this example. Assume that your client is Amazon. Okay, mm -hmm. Amazon is using Oracle ERP, and now. Mm -hmm. So we know what is the purpose of Amazon like uh, what is the purpose why Amazon uses ERP because they want to maintain all the list of items which for which they can send to the customers right nothing but they want to maintain the list of all the items which are available which are available for the sale. Mm -hmm. So each item should have its own set of you know like uh, generally when you consider any item what will have it what is the thing an item will have it will have an item number first of all item ID item number mm -hmm. item price description UOM right and generally it'll have a batch number also if it is a medical related product right and mm -hmm. it'll also have serial number lot number the lot number of other things will be there okay but general mm -hmm. generally this particular column will be available for any item item id mm -hmm. number item price and all those things so item number what in most of the companies what they do is they want to generate this item number based on a particular sequence. So whenever you generate some item, the two first two digits should signify, uh, should signify, you know, like uh, which location it is. The next two letters mm -hmm. should signify, signify, you know, like uh, for which particular type it is. And the next some mm -hmm. other letters should signify something, right? So some organization mm -hmm. will prefer that, and some organization doesn't prefer any of those logics. It all depends upon the setup. Now in the master items, mm -hmm. let us say I'll just create one item now. Okay. Mm -hmm. These guys totally screwed up. Okay. Yeah, Cetal manufacturing. Yeah, I'll use M1. Okay, now this is my organization code. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now I'll, what I'll do is I'll enter my item number. X L T item one. Item description. Okay. Just save it. Okay. Let it save. So till that point, MTL system items B where segment one is equal to the item number this item number right yeah hey, can you see now segment one yes. column the column segment one is holding this one but if you see other segments they will not have any values because this may have multiple segments this particular mm -hmm. table is having multiple segments. First of all, you know, like uh, rather than having a single column to store the number, why does it is having these particular segment columns? Because each particular client may have a different number, different numbering sequence. So to provide extensibility to to extens to provide the extensibility functionality, Oracle has done this way. That's the only reason. Are you getting or did I? Make a sense. Or? Mm -hmm. okay. Very good. Let me explain you. See one example. Let us say consider bank account number. Mm -hmm. If you clearly observe any of the bank account number generally. Most of the times what I observed is like the first particular four digits or five digits will have a branch number. And then followed by some unique account number of that particular branch. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now here if you observe generally like assume that you belong to chennai branch and i belong to kerala branch assume that like we are the bank uh, what you say we belong to a bank department where our responsibility is to create the bank account numbers and we have a specific mm -hmm. responsibility so whenever i create any new account number the first segment one the first segment one should always my branch id branch number mm -hmm. And the second segment one, the segment two should have my mm -hmm. account number, right? Mm -hmm. So now what will happen? Like uh, this will generate a unique combination, right? This will generate a unique combination for me. And for you, 
for segment one belongs to your your branch and segment two segment mm -hmm. two belongs to your account number a unique account number within okay. the within that particular branch isn't it mm -hmm. so yeah. like you know like rather than you selecting something automatically the segment one will get generated and even segment two also either you can type it and you can or you can mention an automatic automatic sequence number Whenever you create a new number, automatically will generate. Now in our case, we are entering this one manually, right? Because there was no setup involved in this one. That's the reason it is, you know, it is allowing us to generate the number. But in most of the cases, they also what you do is like they they mention automatic sequence number. It will get generated automatically. It doesn't need to wait for that. Yeah. So okay. here comes here comes the main thing. Now let us say whenever you create a new account, new account, what what is the thing is like a like uh, your system will automatically generate that the first segment the first five digits will be your branch and the next remaining digits will be your the remaining stuff that's how it will generate yeah mm -hmm. this is the main essence of that did i make sense or still so based on the user the segment one value will change like yeah yeah because you know like a re erp is always always about responsible specific functionality right your responsibility will mm -hmm. link to your organization then for item code there is I mean, usually the mm -hmm. yeah now here where i'm creating i'm creating an item in the q1 organization right mm -hmm. or i'll show you one more example one minute let us say i'll go to purchasing responsibility okay now purchase order purchase order yeah now which particular operation which particular OU it is showing it is showing Operating unit name as vision operations, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll close this one. Let's say I'll go to this one again. I'll try to assign one more responsibility for me. Okay. F5 purchasing super user purchase order purchase order okay of course acha did is these guys did not set up properly let me try again Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, can you see my responsibility name is purchasing Vision Sweden, and what is the operating unit it is pointing to? It is pointing to Vision Sweden. Now, mm -hmm. e even if you try to change it, it will not allow you to change it. Yeah. Right. Now, what will happen is in the real time, if you belong to a particular responsibility, they, you can access only that particular responsibility data. You cannot even access any other thing. It's very restricted environment got it okay so now here let us say now i'll just create a particular you know like here if you see the po is disabled right the po field is disabled the po number is getting generated automatically in this particular scenario mm -hmm. let's say i'll try to see general yeah g capital and i'll select i'll just save it once i click on save the po number will get generated can you see four nine five six mm -hmm. yeah and this PO number is a number. It's not an ID. There is a quite difference between number and ID. We generally we generally feel some confusion regarding this, but let me tell you. So PO numbers will get stored in which table? Which column? Segment one. Got it? Check this one, latest one, because you may have a same PO number, but in different particular organization. Mm -hmm. This is our this is our PO number, and this is PO header ID. Can you see the PO header ID is unique, but not PO number. Okay. Right. That's how it is. So, what is the reason of using this particular segment or KF functionality in this particular number generation is to generate unique numbers. It is providing a functionality for that. So, you know, you can you can have it as an autom automatic number generation, or you can name it. 
you can manually enable it or you can automatically enable it to generate it that's the only purpose and the numbering so, can be a single number or a multiple logic. number yeah sorry is it like i mean usually in warehousing environment mm -hmm. uh, whenever um, a new uh, record or whenever a new data comes we'll we'll generate a surrogate key for every mm -hmm. record mm -hmm. which will be unique mm -hmm. okay. uh, we will use usually a sequencer mm -hmm. to generate that i mean when we are using this uh, kff i, I mean does the similar kind of thing happens like we are writing some logic to generate a new number new unique number uh yes of course we are generating a unique number yes that is correct but it is not a primary key and kind of thing because primary key is okay. ids anything anything which generally you have a underscore id it's a primary key mostly okay but for a particular i mean imagine that we have four organization for that one single organization like um in the vision sweden the say like, this number will not this number is unique right obvious yes so this particular column 4956 for this org id you will not get repeated again okay okay um, just to make now yeah. so there is one more very important thing important thing we generally come across that is called you know gl code combination okay so mm -hmm. just observe this first then we can discuss new general okay now just save it okay mm -hmm. now here just try to get the gl je header id okay mm -hmm. je header id now what i want to do is i'll go to gl je lines table mm -hmm. gl je lines where je header id is equal to this thing now mm -hmm. here observe here like just now we we selected this accounting code com accounting account numbers right account numbers mm -hmm. these two account numbers but here observe what it, what it is storing can you see this code combinations right code combination id can you see the column mm -hmm. okay so in oracle you know generally like uh, this particular oracle database or even the applications what we design generally we follow a particular concept right now here in oracle scenario what we do is this account number will not get stored account number will not get stored the account id will get stored nothing but the code combination id is getting stored and okay. even if you if you observe ledger name for a user it will show ledger name but in the background it will not store ledger name it will store only ledger id okay that's how everywhere everywhere most of the places whatever sh whatever it shows to you may not be saved in the same way it may it may store the ids not the na real names real values okay it will always retrieve from the background again okay now just see these two account numbers can you see these two account concatenated segments yes now these numbers were generated if you see it's a concatenated segments nothing but you'll have a segment column segment 1 starting from segment 1 can you see segment 1 segment 1 2 3 mm -hmm. 4 yeah mm -hmm. so generally the general like uh, financial module prefers this particular generation mm -hmm. account number generations okay this is also kff concept okay i'll show you this particular kff okay yeah go to application developer go to flexi field key and register general ledger mm -hmm. gl hash i hope so yeah yeah accounting flexible we gen like the the logic which you have seen the gl code combination table right this was a table name mm -hmm. and this is the title mm -hmm. name but from where i got it so i have been used to this that's the reason i was able to directly find it but really i don't remember from where i get this information okay 
So now this is a place generally, you know, in the normal real time requirement, you never need to define any new key, any new key flexible. It's all about configuration. It's all about enabling the some set of values. You never I, it, in my case, like I never come across defining a new KFF actually it again. It may depend on requirement, but very very rare case and even it need to be done generally the functional guys should do should be doing it or maybe if it is if it becomes your responsibility also it, be, it will be easy task it won't be that much tough tough okay now yeah so this is the definition of the key flex field just search it now like uh, if you see our uh, code combinations these were having till how many segments five segments right only five oh. values are there just observe here go to segments search for this yeah and now here what you do is yeah again here there is something called operation accounting flexibility yeah operation not this one operation yes operation accounting flex field click on segments yes now can you see these five segments so a single unique number is getting generated by clubbing these five accounts. That's a concept. And these five, these five, combining these five will generate a unique code combination ID. Combining these particular five values, it will generate a unique ID. Of course, the combination of five is again unique. Mm -hmm. Okay. And these each segment is referring to one particular value set again. Operation, I mean, some other value set. Mm -hmm. So this is the like you see each module may have different segment concept now in our like uh, as of now we have seen the inventory module like item number generation purchase order generation this accounting generation each particular one will have a different concept purchasing may use a different uh, accounting con combination if you see the purchasing one let us see purchasing Man, okay let me try inventory Yeah, inventory, item catalog, sales order system. Okay, let me search other way. So each particular module will have a different way of generating a segment stuff. So that we have to find out. Okay, and this is. Item flex field that is split segment. Yeah, can you see service item? This is not the one, I guess. System item key flex field. Yeah, I think this is the one. Hmm. Okay. System items. System items. Yeah. Now here, if you see. There is mm -hmm. only one segment got enabled, but if your let us if your client says you know they want the number generation should have two a combination of two segments, then they have to enable one more column here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in our case the example the bank number, so bank number will be a combination of two segments. It require a bank branch as well as bank account number. They may require two account numbers. So it all depends on the requirement. Like I have seen there is one particular manufacturing organization which they use two segments. Mm -hmm. In the item generation. Okay, this is a high end setup, you know, like don't try to change any setups. You can play around with the DFF, but don't do any changes in the KFF. It's quite a different, difficult part. DFF, you know, you can play around. DFF is quite easy. KFF generally a little bit tricky part. Okay, so DFF, what you do is just take any form. Try to find out the DFF name and enable a particular field. Mm -hmm. Enable, disable, mm -hmm. or maybe you know add up a mm -hmm. valid set. Those things just play around. That's it. Fine. Yeah, where yeah. are we? But I think yeah. for the KFF, uh, I'll listen to the class again. Yeah. Um, as of now, I I'm I don't say I didn't understand at all, but I, I want to listen one more time. Yeah, yeah, it is not that much easy. <laughs> See, to get clarity yeah. for me also it took much time. <laughs> it is not that much easy. <laughs> it's a dry kind of thing. You know, KFF is very dry. K mm -hmm. DFF is damn easy, but KFF is a little bit trickier kind of thing. Yeah. Because each module mm -hmm. will have a different way of use usage. So it may not be same. 
okay uh, in, in when i was uh, using this hr operating units table mm. i can see even the business group id is changing yeah okay i mean see, i mean like, uh, yeah i'll tell you so sing generally in a normal real time environment you will have only one single business group but as this is a training instance most people would have created their own business groups also right that's the reason you'll have a different business groups okay yeah in real time also generally you may have multiple business groups why because assume that like uh, in most of the organization bigger organizations always within 5 years or 1 year generally mergers and acquisition happens right mm -hmm. so if you remember our somewhere we were discussing right like mm -hmm. whether you want to like uh, whether you want to shift your yeah. erp oracle erp to sap or sap to something like that in those scenarios you know like mm -hmm. this is what this is what happens if the existing business system is so complex they don't want to disturb our oracle system they'll just create the different total structure for them they'll migrate their data into that particular business group and they maintain separately okay yeah yeah so shall we wind up or you want to have few more things mm -hmm. let's uh, i think it's better if we wind up let yeah. me yeah, yeah let me just go through the tables have... go through the tables and mm -hmm. try to create component for messages value set lookups and value set as of now you know like uh, just create a value set find out which table it is getting stored okay find if the table mm -hmm. name it is fn deflex value sets yeah but just try to see it mm -hmm. and if for all these things I have a table name try to for a concurrent mm -hmm. program find out the table for concurrent executable concurrent program and for profiles and for users responsibilities menus and functions also mm -hmm. for everything find out the table you see it is very easy from here also you can do it as of now like a, we, i don't think we have created any we have created any form or function but what you can do is now we know application developer responsibility right so in the application developer responsibility now find out in which table this particular record is getting stored nothing but which menu it is which responsibilities which responsibility it is and what are the functions which are assigned to this one and what are their types whether it's a oaf page or whether it's a fmb one those things just try to find out right okay yeah so maybe in the next session we'll try to work on the value sets the table value sets and uh, we'll try to check out the dependent uh, what do you call dependent parameters and later on we'll still forward that okay okay what time will be our session tomorrow uh tomorrow i may not be available tomorrow yeah we'll meet on thursday okay yeah i'll send you some documents just go through them time mm -hmm, it sure yeah fine thursday it will be the morning or uh, can you i mean uh, tomorrow